Hello everybody, this is Ahmed and this is another episode of the breakout podcast here at the School of Advanced Studies, uh, SAS, University of Timur. Uh, and today I have a special guest with me, Shipte Tsiavich. Tsiavich uh, is our uh, professor, he is the Dean of Faculty and uh, he is too many things. Uh, <laughs> uh, and he is also the coordinator of the, uh, of the educators. Uh, projects and the track at the excellence track and actually we would like to talk today about this thing that is called the excellence track right uh, just a little bit of an introduction about what is excellence track in general uh, excellence track is uh, a program where we can say that that way is the program at SES here at the school uh, which is designed and uh, for um, the students who would like to go for the extra mile. Uh, these students are not necessarily the best students at the school, but these are the ones who have a wide range of interests and uh, also a lot of free time because they can manage their time uh, efficiently and uh, they can do something beyond the curricula, beyond the what we call the Ochobni plan, right? Uh, so. These are students who can do or would like to do something outside of their courses, outside of the classroom, but something very meaningful to them and for the community around them, as well as, I mean, the team that they are working with. And Siavish is the coordinator of the ones who would like to work on education, or actually, uh, they are working right now on designing courses and uh, working on education. Uh, there is another thread is for scholars, the ones who are interested in research. Uh, they are coordinated by also one of our professors, it's Cindy. Uh, so, yeah, so, and we're going to talk today about the idea of excellence, about what is excellence in, uh, I don't know if we can say it in a Russian higher education institution, but at least here for us at, at the School of Advanced Studies, and uh, we will see, maybe we will try to understand what we can make out of excellence and uh, whether we need to kind of, uh, I don't know, promote, uh, make it universal program. I don't know, we will see, all right? So thank you so much, Tavish, for really coming in today. Thank you. Yeah, good yeah. That's nice. yeah. So where, where would you like to do action to start? I don't know, maybe we start with that, with how we, how we began this program, actually, mm -hmm. about uh, about a year ago. So the, the idea was that, actually the SAS actually was, was based upon, you know, like the idea of having perhaps an excellent educational institution. Uh, but like every plan or, you know, like every project, it came to some sort of, I would say, not dead ends, but, you know, like it would not be able to fulfill all uh, that had been put before it. Okay, so to say. So uh, perhaps the excellence set was first of all some sort of an experimental uh, response, as a matter of fact, to certain difficulties that SAS uh, confronted in terms of fulfilling the, the goals, you know, like achieving the goals it had put before itself in terms of, you know, like uh, in terms of training and educating students. Uh, so the thing was, uh, I think there was the, some study was made, internal study, that would show that uh, despite actually the very kind of uh, compact and, and uh, difficult curriculum that we have here, uh, many of the students, particularly the very good ones, I mean, um, did not, you know, like need that much of effort actually to pass courses or, you know, like even graduate, you know, like uh, they, they would not need to work as hard as they wanted and then they had to, uh, pretty lot of time, you know, like, I mean, this was not the case for everybody, of course, you know, like, and not everybody was, you know, like, uh, said, uncomfortable with this, you know, I think uh, it's some sort of, you know, like a commonsensical view that, well, the less effort you put in something and achieving something, the better it is, so why should we put more? But I think there, there was this group of students at, at SAS that were motivated intellectually, and uh, they wanted to achieve something beyond that. You know, it was it's not about just graduation, receiving a diploma, 
getting a good job or even receiving good grades. But, but it's about, you know, like uh, being an independent, I would say, person, personality, independent in terms of, you know, like uh, being able to pose questions, to, to tackle with, 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 with problems, you know, like uh, to go out of the box. These were actually, as I said, the ideals that we have, you know, like in, in face of the question, what is the aim of education, for instance? So eventually in, in face of this situation and because there was some sort of a tacit demand amongst all the students uh the man the management of the school the directorship of the school of advanced studies um uh, kind of came up with this idea that maybe we should we should come up with some sort of an uh alternative within the school itself that would eventually perhaps you know like work as a model uh for restructuring the whole education to say yes well, basically this is this is the idea yes i had an at that so for example you are actually managing your classes so the excellence track they have classes they but they are not classes they will call them tutorials yeah and we, when we actually were designing the excellence track with eva we liked so much that i did this idea of tutorials that we borrowed from oxford practice they have tutorials but they have individual tutorials so like each professor sits with one only one student and they have but we really have that we have professor in the box and that's why we came up with this tutorials for the set of like a group of the students of excellence of track to focus on 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 their projects really how would you assess your coordination of the tutorials and uh, in 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 connection to the projects that the students already did, at least in the first part of the excellence track, who already managed to design courses and to deliver them uh, as electives here at the school, how how would you assist then your help to their curricular course design? And I mean, I think my role is like more than you know, like like more than being a teacher or instructor. It's like a mentor, I would say. Like these these people, these students that are that are in the in, in an educator in educators track, and perhaps you know like uh, because I have had the chance to talk to other students as well in that um, the researchers uh, track as well, but particularly the ones in, in that uh, in the educators track. I mean, these are type of you know personalities that can that eventually will find their own way. Any okay, so there's not much in that sense that I can you know like. Uh, I can I can contribute to them, but what I can do is that I can give them you know food for thinking, and sometimes a little push, not a push, actually a little hint. You know, there are these moments that you say, ah, oh, you know, like because somebody just tells you something. You know, so my my role is a little bit like that. Uh, so how we began, actually, because everything you know like came in in a sense in a rush. You know, like. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I was not sure what I was going to do, uh, but then I thought, okay, uh, because I'm interested in, 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 in philosophy of education, and actually my own mentor at Queen's University in, in, in Kingston, Ontario, uh, is a philosopher on education, alongside other things, okay? Um, so I thought, yeah, why not thinking about, you know, like some, some sort of, I would say, basics of the idea of education together with these, you know, like uh, with these excellent students, they're excellent really, you know, like, um, so we, we started to come up with some sort of, we came up with a program, a leading program uh, for the few uh, couple of months, I would say, or a couple of quarters, I had them making, you know, like presentations. I have a very rigid understanding of presentations, by the way. So I have certain rules. You have to do this, you have to do that. Otherwise, it's not a presentation for me. Not about slides. It's not about slides. It's about, you know, how you, you know, like compile the information, the content, how you relate and so on and so forth. Uh, and I've always, I have always wanted, to, of course, I always ask them also about the three things that try to find, you know, like some practical, I would say, implications, so to say, from, from these three things. Although I'm not a very practical minded person myself. I'm by profession, I'm a philosopher and very theoretically oriented, uh, but definitely, I can say that you know, like that there are you know, 
that there are, you know, not only implications, but there is some sort of reality to these theories that they come up with. Particularly if you come from that, uh, I'd say, critical theory tradition, so to say. So that how that's that does my role. So I would provide them with very, you know, like sometimes very intense and difficult readings by prominent philosophers of education. Uh, for instance, the very first things that we read together with them was uh, this excellent book by my mentor, as I said, Professor David Packers, who is also a member of Royal Academy of Canada, by the way, a very prominent scientist uh, and philosopher. Uh, that uh, the formation of reason, which is a very intense book on, I would say, um, at the at the verge of philosophy of mind and philosophy of education. Uh, so we started to working with that, and it was quite difficult, of course. I mean, perhaps it was for the first time that they kind of were facing some sort of intense, difficult to grasp reading, which was very good, which was very motivating for them. Uh, and then we started to talk about all these details, so on and so forth. Uh, eventually, we would read other stuff as well. I mean, and then after a while, when I thought that it is sufficient, we stopped uh, the presentations and we turned it into really like kind of a discussion group. You know, like with me being you know, like kind of, as I said, at the role of mentor, sometimes a coordinator, you know, uh, I even asked them to choose readings for the, some of the tutorials, meetings, and it's 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 great. So, you know, like I would say, I personally benefited a lot. I learned a lot myself in this pro, or like in this process, and uh, they have come up with very good stuff. You know, already as a part of the the task force, you know, like these uh, uh, designing these courses, which they already did, but even now. They're almost about to, I mean, at least the first court, they're almost about to finish. They have come up with ideas for new courses, new things to do. And again, although it was not in our, you know, like program as educators, because we're educators, supposedly. <laughs> now we're thinking about maybe uh, composing a co-authored um, uh, academic article together. You know, like I came up with the idea. Uh, some of the students, they really liked it. I hope we can. And it's too bad. I'm sure. But I can. I'm sure. I'm sure. But yeah. So and the, we have. So right now we have the first cohort is about actually to graduate from the excellence track, and uh, it is sad. But also I'm really looking forward to that. And we have got out of three groups in the educators track, we have got two groups who managed to deliver two courses. The first one is beyond the kitchen table. Uh, and uh, that's the ti that's the title of the course. It was called that Beyond the Kitchen Table. It was an elective offered to two students. And the other one is about hate and crime. Um, uh, so, uh, how would you say, uh, for example, how do you see the success in that? Do you see that this is actually amazing? They did that. They managed to do that. They are actually third-year students and. And that's something that I don't think that in, in a usual uh, Russian institution, uh, I don't know if not only Russia, maybe anywhere, uh, would be a third year bachelor bachelor uh, degree student would be able to do that. Uh, and they were able to do that. Uh, how do you assess whether their projects, do you think like this is actually the art, the art? trying to include what you they have been studying with you, reading with you, doing the presentations on and the, the discussion, having the discussions with you, stuff like that? Uh, or how do you see their success, actually? What is the criteria in this regard? Okay, let me begin from somewhere else, of course, and I will come back to that. Yeah. Like, uh, a very interesting thing with these, you know, like, uh, designed courses was that our students, again, totally by themselves, you know, these excellence track students uh, by themselves and at their own initiative, I mean. And at that time, they were second year students. Yeah, by the way. You know, not third year students, okay. <laughs> the second year students. They designed the miniature of these courses, usually, <laughs> and they, 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 they started to go in other cities, like in Omsk, for instance. They participated in this kind of summer school uh, intended for, uh, for high schoolers, like I think for Nine, tenth grade, or something like that, and and they 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 already have the the, the very condensed 
form, and perhaps a little bit, I would say, um, not easier, but you know, like at at, at a different level. I mean, that, that that would that would speak to to high schoolers of these courses for three days, for instance, in in Omsk during that thing. And the, this by itself is amazing, first of all. So uh, it means that they all not only have the grasp of of how to de devise a them and design a course, but also how to you know like kind of make it available or accessible, so to say, to, to students at a different level. So high schooler is a different thing than, yeah. you know, like a, a university student after all. Um, as for the courses, well, I was fortunate enough actually to be one of the four professors that was involved in Beyond the Kitchen Table. And I would say that this is one of the best experiences that I have had in teaching a course and then co-teaching a course. Um, the way the course is designed, you know, like it's, 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 it, this is a course about food studies in a sense. Okay. I would say, um, and it is, it is, it is organized around a set of questions rather than answers or so. And then these set of questions, they can be addressed and they were addressed from very different perspectives. Myself, I was like, uh, because of my orientation, uh, my contribution was like a critical uh, study of food or critical food study basic basis based on, on you know, like the Marxist tradition, for instance. Uh, other professors like Giacomo, for instance, Giacomo Andrelotti, uh, his was more on metaphysics of food, I would say. Uh, Devin would totally take a different, you know, like a, a, a approach um, from the side of, let's say, uh, other, I would say, like, like with, with the relation to concepts such as, you know, obsessive attachment to food, so on and so forth. So, like, it was, uh, and it worked very well. It was, it was excellent, you know, like, to, and it was, it was amazing to be in that course. And not only did the, the course content, um, like the way they, they arranged uh, uh, assignments, for instance, they were quite unique and very and innovative, okay? Um, so in that sense, it was a great course. What was my contribution? I don't know if in, if if I had uh, something to that's that's like perhaps this little thing that a question is always more important than an answer, and that's that's uh, that has been something that we have been talking about a lot. I mean, this is a very simple thing, you know, like but simple things are very difficult to grasp because they're simple. Because you cannot go around them, you have to really, you have to really grasp it. You know, like the the, the this simple fact is that now science or knowledge begins with a question. So if you have that question, there you go. Then you have you can come up with something genuine. I I hope that I have had at least I I have a, the, the ability to, to to contribute to understanding the importance of posing questions rather than coming up with answers. Um, Maybe that's that's a little bit, you know, like of what my thing into it. So you think like the success of their project depends on how, uh, or simply their ability to ask meaningful questions that can be not answered directly in I don't know in five minutes conversation, but it needs dedication in order to pass a course of on I mean in two months in order to have a maybe an understanding on how to approach the question. So you think that their success was in asking, posing questions. Yeah, exactly. And I think this is the ideal that any education system should put before itself. You know, uh, and I think it corresponds to that as well. I mean, we should teach, you know, like the student to think, we say. And thinking means posing questions. Mm -hmm. You know, like, but what, what I mean by posing questions is that, of course, problems, they come. But, you know, like identifying the problem Oh, it's only possible if you pose a question to the problem. Mm -hmm. But if you formulate the problem into a, uh, into a meaningful question, I'd say, okay? And that, that's the thing. I mean, so, so by itself, I, I, would, I, I think that this project was also, you know, like a kind of a corroboration of the idea that genuine knowledge and genuine teaching learning process as, you know, like an integral part of production of knowledge comes with this type of attitude questioning attitude rather than answering attitude. And this also challenges, of course, it challenges, I, I think, the whole global uh, education establishment. 
you know, you see these people talking about, you know, like what are the problems, blah, 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 you know, reforms, reforms and reforms, you know, like I was joking actually in, in one of our tw tutorials that these people are Trotskyist, I think, you know, like these edu people involved in education. They're in the state of permanent reform and revolution all the time, you know, like, but you know, that we need so much of reform and so on and so forth around the world also is a showcase that, well, the so forth, you know, so far those solutions have not been needed. Okay. Uh, and I think that's because they're missing that core. You know, like how we can really teach people, our students, whatever, everybody, including us, have to think. And I think that that's this simple answer. They have to learn to pose a question. And I think that's the, that's the key. Mm -hmm. uh, to the success of this course, have yes. you Actually, it, it, if, if, if I may actually go back to to the the project that, that they did uh, during summer, uh, when they when they went to Omsk and they had this uh, uh, seminars and courses taught to the high school students, and as you said that it was accessible, I was so impressed by the fact that they were able to communicate. Um, or at least to convey the message of a heavy course such as great books and T of Y, uh, the topic so the topic of the first year to include like the idea of interdisciplinarity to high school students, and they were like uh, I was talking to Nastia and she was like Ahmed the I'm, I'm I just I can't believe it that these high school students now understand why we should really have mathematics connected with. I don't know, whatever else that it's in humanities. And she was really happy about that. And of course, the entire team was really happy about this. And uh, helping, of course, these Russian Russian future I mean, leaders and the students uh, of, of higher education uh, have an idea about what they should expect when they go to the university. Uh, and right now, again, going outside and are doing this research and this big project in a small town uh, near Tumen and they are thinking about having, uh, I don't know, designing and planning an entire uh, public park uh, and uh, understanding the educational philosophies around this. There, is, there are some schools around and they would like to understand how can they help the schools look at each other. I was so fascinated. I was like, mm, right. So this give back to the society, mm -hmm. right? That we see happened, and as you said, that these students were already motivated. They would find their way anyway, yeah. right? But what what I think that they might face or might have faced uh, is um, that that some some professors, all right, they or some educational environments. They tend to hold on the students. They tend to preserve them. As for example, Arendt likes to 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 have such a teacher, right? Is that the teacher should be the one who preserves the power of the youth. The youth have energy and they should not let outside of the world. But on this hand, on, on our in our case, we have got these very motivated, energetic uh, students who are giving back to society in a very meaningful way. Um, and the, I'm really interested to understand, is it because of their motivation or is it because of this um, relationship that it's on an equal basis with the professor, with you as their mentor, as as you said that you, you are mentoring them, um, or is it just because it's an innate desire that they really wanted to do something in their own society and that they wanted to help everybody around them, that they are they have a belief in that and they would like to continue doing this and flourish in this regard. How is that? Do you think that there is, I know that maybe it, it's a mix of two, but how do you see this in general? Yeah, I mean, it's a mix of everything, but first I have a qualification, of course, here that desires are not innate. Nothing is bad. Yeah, bro. You yeah. know, it was right. <laughs> Definitely, these students also, they are, you know, they're going out and so on and so forth. But what is, again, at the core is, as, as I said, you know, like once you get this ability or this obsession or whatever you want to call it, you know, like, or this unfortunate capability of posing questions, asking questions, you do it all around, all around it, you know, like, I mean, at, at, and again, that's why I think that the, the, the dominant, educational establishment does not really like the idea of 
question, you know, like, I mean, questioning students, so to say, thinkers. Because then you start to, you know, like, just think about other things. I mean, these, the, I mean, these questions do not have to be really like, let's say, politically motivated or, you know, like, you know, like, not, not, not like that, you know, like, although, you know, like, whenever you ask a question, of course, there is some sort of political implication because you're challenging the status quo after all. But that's about it, I think, you know, like, they have this capability now. It has been fostered, okay, because we sit down and discuss, you know, like, and uh, particularly my, my personal method is more than, you know, like, just talking about stuff is to ask questions with my students. And I'm not only in an excellence track, actually, um, and because of that, I've received sometimes very, very interesting and good, um, I would say, feedback at the, at the course evaluations. For instance, the best ever I've received is that uh, because I asked some question, a student asked me whether I know the answer, I said no. They say that I'm not very well prepared for the class. I'll say cool. <laughs> but anyway, so that's a method, okay? Just ask the questions and... And I think these bunch of students that I'm mentoring, so to say, or you know, like I'm coordinating, they are fond of, as I said, of this question asking. So for them now, everything can, can be problematized. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the thing, you know, then that's how actually you make bond with, 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 with society. It's not just about saying, okay, let's go to the field. No, because you cannot order these type of things. You know, it, we are not God that say, okay, let it be that and that be that, you know, like this doesn't happen like that. But the link is, as I said, to see the real problem or to, to see the problem in reality. For, for somebody that wants to think there's always questions, always, so you know, like they, can, they can compose it in different ways and they can try to respond it to, uh, to in different ways. And actually, this is how maybe we get better. You know, we get better in, in many senses. We get better in terms of, you know, like being better thinkers. We get better in terms of being better citizens. Uh, we get better in terms of, you know, like trying to better actually the society mm -hmm. or the, the community around us to contribute to it, to, to tackle the problems that they are there, you know, because sometimes the problem comes, it's, it's like that, you know, like, I mean, your car doesn't work, let's say the engine doesn't work. I mean, you try to, you know, like march on and it doesn't. Well, yeah, so you can formulate the question that, well, it doesn't march. But then you take it to somebody that is, that is, you know, like capable of knowing what is going on, a mechanic, and they will tell you the real question, the real problem. So it's, it's something like that, I would, I would say, you know, like this capability to ask questions, okay? It's, it's not just to live, to stay at that, at that phenomenal level. Everybody, if you go out, everybody is nagging about everything. Everybody is complaining about it. Because, yeah, if something is not working, something is not working. You know that. But the... You know, like, you have to identify why it's not working. Very simple. I think it's very simple. I understand this. But as I said, these obvious things we always miss. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, like, I, I, I would say that this thinking capability and posing question capability is about asking, you know, questions or questioning the obvious, mm -hmm. what is before you. you know, because that's where, you know, like, I think the, the, the essence of the of the matter is, is hidden. I see. So... What these students therefore do is that, you know, like, I think they have come up with this, with this, with this idea now. They, 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 they can see problems, they can identify questions, they can compose them in a meaningful way. And, you know, like, and then, and therefore they can try, you know, like to come up with some answers. Well, some answers might be okay, some answers might not, but it doesn't matter. I think that the, the, the true virtue, as I said, is this proper questioning. Because if you formulate a proper question, by I mean, in principle, sooner or later you're going to be able to resolve. It. Otherwise, of course. But if you don't put a question, you cannot resolve anything, or maybe just by chance, I'll say. I see. Yeah. All right. So because we're actually running like out of time and all of that, but they're just amazing, seriously. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Very hands really. Uh, and uh, of course, we hope that uh, more uh, people will have the same approach. Uh, in in educating others and the uh, students, of course, in this regard, to, um, uh, teaching them how to pose questions and to persuade them and to keep on, I don't know, keep them motivated and passionate about their their own questions, yeah. right? 
not not somebody else's fortune. And of course, yeah, I mean the teacher in in this regard. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you very much for yeah. having the time to. Uh, seriously, that was just brilliant. Thank you so, thank you so much. And um, you know, so uh, so this is our was our talk for today. Uh, I know that might be short, but we will invite Siavish again. No problem. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything, thoughts, of course, we will appreciate your comments and uh, see you.